Hey everyone, Atano here, and once again, welcome back to the channel. Today is another installment video in our machine guide series, and we'll be talking all about the Tide Ripper today. By the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know about them from their strengths to weaknesses to what resources they carry, and most importantly, how to take them down. The Tide Ripper is one of my personal favorite machine designs in this game, and I had a lot of fun making this guide in particular. So if you've been enjoying this machine guide series so far, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next upload. And without further ado, this is all you need to know about the Tide Ripper. The Tide Ripper is a heavyweight acquisition class machine introduced in the later portion of the game and are one of the more unique foes you'll encounter in the Forbidden West. They reside underwater in the western regions of the map and will typically stay away from the surface unless threatened. Their design is based off the plesiosaur with their long neck, massive tail fin, and four aquatic fins for legs. On land, they can be slow, but they make up for it with their long-ranged purge water cannons and widespread melee attacks. Their body contains a high number of purge water sacs throughout, which it uses to enhance some of those melee attacks. They can also serve as exploitable weak spots to deal high damage when you need. The Tide Ripper is also one of the few heavyweight machines with two elemental weaknesses, so preparing before the battle to exploit these should be of high priority. If you haven't guessed it already, the Tide Ripper inflicts purge water damage with basically all of its attacks. It will also use melee damage and impact damage, especially when its purge water sacks become depleted. The Karja Stalker Elite provides great purge water defense and provides helpful bonuses if you enjoy the Trapper playstyle. This outfit can be obtained at the Maw of the Arena along with some other legendary outfits. Although earlier game outfits like the Utaru Protector and Tanakh the Vindicator will still provide decent purge water defense if you have yet to obtain the legendary outfits. You can also equip additional purge water defense weaves to further boost your resistance to purge water. For weapons, Hunter Bows are going to be a great choice for tearing off the Tide Ripper's Tidal Disc and Tail Fin, while Sharp Shot Bows with high impact damage will help with detonating their purge water sacks. I also find that Tripwires work very well against the Tide Ripper because of their large body size. The Perimeter Trip Caster, which is obtainable by completing the Blood for Blood side quest given at the Memorial Grove, is a great option to use against the Tide Ripper since it has shock wires. It also provides shield wires, which can sometimes help defend you against the many purge water attacks coming your way. The Tide Ripper's main strengths are its arsenal of ranged purge water attacks and high damage melee attacks. Both the standard and apex variant have the same elemental strengths and weaknesses. They're strong versus fire and purge water, while weak versus frost and shock. When you find yourself at a distance from a Tide Ripper, they will mainly be using their pressurized purge water cannons to deal damage. These are fairly easy to detect and avoid, but on occasion they will send a high speed purge water wave which can be more difficult to avoid. The Tide Ripper's purge water supply can be depleted if it uses too many purge water attacks, revealing an exhaust port on its backside that also acts as a weak spot. Its other main weak spots will be any of their six purge water sacks, tidal disc, tail fin, and armor covered heart. Detonating any of its purge water sacks will inflict it with the purge water status, disabling all elemental strengths and elemental attacks for its duration. When the Tide Ripper switches to using its melee attacks though, good dodge timing is important as some of these attacks can deal high damage. Many of them have long startup times, so timing your dodge right should not be an issue for you. Just watch out for when its tidal disc begins spraying purge water out like a sprinkler. This attack can constantly throw you to the ground if you're too close, so create some distance between yourself and the Tide Ripper before tearing off the disc. A good way to do this is by shocking them at the start of the encounter and removing it then before they have a chance to even use it. Another important component to tear off will be its tail fin. Doing this will disable some of its melee attacks, making the fight a bit easier. However, it will still use its wide sweeping neck attacks, so definitely be cautious of those. Tide Rippers can be taken down fairly quickly though if you decide to exploit its frost weakness. When frozen, they will take increased impact and explosive damage. And lastly, if you can get access to it by removing the armor plating, their heart will be the best weak spot to deal the most damage. 
When destroyed, the Tide Ripper, like all other machines, will provide you with a variety of loot with different percentages, but the important loot used for your gear upgrades are the Tide Ripper Primary Nerve with a 62% chance to drop, the Tide Ripper Circulator with a 69% chance to drop, and the Tide Ripper Tailfin with a 100% chance to drop if removed with tear damage before destroying the machine. The Tide Ripper's four tail canisters each have a 23% chance to contain another primary nerve and a 27% chance to contain blast paste. And finally, on the Apex variant, you'll want to definitely loot the Apex Tide Ripper Heart and the Luminous Brainstem, both with a 100% chance to drop when defeated. The Tide Ripper can provide you with a unique encounter, but are certainly a very fun machine to take down in Horizon Forbidden West. I hope this mini guide has helped you in some capacity for when you take them on in a fight. If you'd like to see more machine guide videos, go ahead and click on that video right there on your screen and definitely give this video a like, it helps out the channel tremendously. Thanks for tuning in today. I'll see you all in the next one.